Adonai Studios presents a Ghana Somu Bijumedie documentary. Ghana's built environment, 15 years after the Disability Act, Act 715. In August 2006, the Parliament of Ghana passed the Disability Act, Act 715, to serve as a roadmap to ensure that the over 5 million persons with disabilities in Ghana live in comfort and dignity. The Act, among other things, captures the accessibility concerns of persons with disabilities. Section 6 of the Act gave a 10-year moratorium for all existing buildings that were not accessible to be enhanced with features that would make them accessible to persons with disabilities. That moratorium elapsed in August 2016, and yet most buildings in the country, including those of the state, are still not accessible. Indeed, there are buildings, public and government buildings, that are still not accessible. Christopher Agbaga, COVID-19 Project Officer, Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations speaking. There is a level of disappointment because it's been more than 10 years since the moratorium. Looking forward to, you know, the built environment being accessible for persons with disabilities without having to see that we need access. But here lies the case, it looks as though we have to keep we sound in that issue every now and then. At my previous um, university, where I did my HND, I experienced the same thing. Docas Margaret Majite, student with Spina Bifida and Hagisafala speaking. And then currently, where I'm doing my degree, I am experiencing the same thing. In the sense that almost all the lecture halls are upstairs. And so I have to, I have to always um, climb it almost every time and there were so many instances where um, I fell in the process of climbing the staircase. really stressful and tiring. They think it is too much of a cost. Emma Lillian Brislai, board member, National Council on Persons with Disabilities speaking. So sometimes they tell us we are expensive and I tell them we are not expensive. It is because you don't involve us at the beginning of your projects for us to show you what to do for us. And it is not only the built environment. Across board, you go to offices and sometimes the reception desk is so high. When you are in a wheelchair and you cannot get up to maybe uh, write what you need to write. Nobody brings it down. Then it means that you are asking too much. We want to be independent like everybody else. The Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations stands out among the lot. The Ministry of Employment and Labor, where the current Chief of Staff was as a minister, a deputy minister, together with Nana Komia, the current managing director for State Transport Corporation. When they were there, they created a very fine environment for us. When you go there, you can see that there is ramp up to the top floor. So we thought after they did it, other ministries will emulate and put structures down for us. But unfortunately, no. Even our own ministry, that is Ministry for Gender, Children and Social Protection, is not being made accessible. You go there for meetings and if you are in a wheelchair, it's very difficult going to their um, conference room. So most of the meetings that are held for persons with disabilities are held downstairs at the open, open place. Some institutions and companies also attempted to make their facilities accessible. However, their efforts fall short of the standards as the ramps built are too steep than what wheelchair users could easily use without assistance. Apart from the moratorium, it was also the expectation of the disability community that the authorities would ensure that all new buildings that will be put up after the Disability Act would be made accessible. But that has not happened. Right from 2006, 
August to 2016. New buildings or structures that were put up did not make any effort to become accessible. Alexander Williams, Advocacy Committee Chair, Ghana Federation of Disability Organization speaking. And the government of Ghana, led by its law enforcement agencies, made no such attempt to actually ensure that new buildings that were being put up from August 2006 were even compelled to be accessible. We did not from the one put in place any measure meaningful enough to implement section 6 of Act 715. Hotels that were even built after the Disability Act was promulgated, they don't do it. When you go to the U blocks, persons with disabilities cannot use it. So it means that they are stopping us from assessing education. What is so difficult about ensuring that the schools that you have been, you have given permits to build are disability friendly? At the Global Disability Summit in 2018, the government of Ghana made eight commitments aimed at removing specific barriers that work against the inclusion of persons with disabilities at all levels of development. Four years later, which will be 2022, Ghana will be hosting the Global Summit together with the Government of Norway and the International Disability Alliance. However, the Government of Ghana is yet to demonstrate any intention to carry out its eighth commitment, which is to ensure accessibility for persons with disabilities. The Government of Ghana has not shown any demonstrable evidence with regards their commitment towards ensuring accessibility in the built environment beyond lip service. When you look at an instrument that is currently existing to guide accessibility of the built environment, which is GS1119, an instrument that was first and foremost drafted by the disability community led by the Ghana Society of the Physical Disabled as well as the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations and proposed to the government of Ghana, in this case the regulatory institution responsible being the Ghana Standards Authority. And uh, in spite of the existence of these, the government of Ghana has not taken any step to ensure that places are made accessible. The unfriendly built environment in the country is a huge drawback to the many years of campaign by organizations of persons with disabilities, as well as civil society groups for the inclusion of persons with disabilities into mainstream society. Indeed, it, it is affecting the progress of the disability community because accessibility is, is when you are able to access, if, if it's a building or it's a service, without barriers. Once there are barriers, you are definitely not able to do what you want to do. See, one of the things that I say personally is that accessibility goes beyond disability. Because if a building is accessible to persons with disabilities, it's accessible to everybody. Sometimes even health facilities, because of the barriers, psychologically, persons with disabilities don't even want to, you know, go to certain health facilities, even though they need their services. But these health facilities are not accessible. So it discourages you know, the disability community from really doing what, you know, we want to do as persons with disabilities. The government of Ghana's inability to ensure that the built environment and uh, together with uh, services and goods are made accessible to persons with disabilities continue to leave persons with disabilities behind in the quest or in the quest for development in this country. So, what the government is succeeding in doing is constantly pro, uh, providing service providers as well as institutions with the excuse to leave persons with disabilities behind in accessing 
goods, services, employment, education. I do think that to a large extent, the government of Ghana, as well as the private sector, would by far and large continue to pay lip service to the situation of making the built environment accessible until the government as well as the private sector begin to feel the pinch of the legal provisions that we have on our law books. International donor partners of the government of Ghana are expected to make efforts to encourage the enforcement of accessibility standards in the country. I think that in these entities quest to ensure that the government of Ghana put to good use money that have been given, these entities have not made as a measurable indicator ensuring that the infrastructure that the government of Ghana use the donor partner money for are indeed made accessible. If Ghana has a provision within its law to make the built environment accessible, furthermore, if Ghana has actually ratified the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which is an international convention or international treaty, Article 9 of which compels the government of Ghana to ensure that the built environment is made accessible, why would this in multilateral and bilateral agencies not ensure that indeed when the government of Ghana come for money from them to build an environment, these environments will not be made accessible to all manner of persons including persons with disabilities. The government of Ghana has embarked on a health infrastructure project dubbed Agenda 111, an initiative to build 111 hospitals and clinics across the country. The project, the government said, would contribute to the attainment of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 3, which is to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all of all ages. The disability community has so far not been consulted for any input, and it is not clear if accessibility for persons with disabilities has been factored into the designs of the project. It is the hope of the disability fraternity that the government in carrying out this initiative would take into consideration the Leave No One Behind agenda, which represents the unequivocal commitment of all United Nations member states to eradicate poverty in all its forms, anti-discrimination and exclusion, and reduce the inequalities and vulnerabilities that leave people behind and undermine the potentials of individuals and humanity as a whole. The Agenda 111 project is also expected to play a key role in the COVID-19 response and recovery process. And considering how the pandemic has negatively affected persons with disabilities in the country due to neglect, if accessibility is once again forgotten, persons with disabilities will continue to be left behind and will be excluded from independently assessing potentially life-saving treatments. The government is therefore called upon once again to take accessibility of persons with disabilities seriously and ensure that their concerns and needs are considered in all endeavors. Produced by Adonai Studios for Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations, JFD, and Ghana Samu Beach Media. Funded by UK Aid. Written and narrated by Benjamin Ni Latte Ayuku. Sign language interpretation by Francis Kweku Esel. Cameraman. Zach Pumpinina, Isaac Watson, Yahaya Bayi, Talents Media, Kojo Concepts, 